to say doors down and not three doors down? Was there a doors down? I don't know. Maybe. It's okay. possible. Welcome to the pod. Are we ready? Oh, My I name is the Professor Nick Harrison. Uh, Miss Professor 318 on all social media outlets, except for X because they're jerks. Uh, this is <clears throat> my hey wife, guys. Lisa. Uh, this is going to be a fun one for me because we're going to talk about music. Um, I might have my phone out a lot, guys, because I don't, I am not talented like my husband and can remember like names of songs, names of bands, names of people in the bands, when he listened to them, what they sounded like, what the names of their albums were. I know none of that. She is very talented in other things, though, and she I will am. not hesitate to let you know that. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Just this, put it out there. But, <laughs> it's one of them things. But this particular... Like this part. This part. Like, I mean, I ask me anatomy questions. <clears throat> Got it. Like, I can just pull them out of nowhere. And, now and then... here comes the resume. Because she's going to tell you all the things she can do really well. But this thing she can't do really well. Keep going. Oh, anatomy. Stop. Now I'm gonna Keep stop. Going. No. I'm, saying, I'm just Don't giving stop an now. There's anatomy. There's business. There's cooking. There's driving. There's <laughs> um, God. Uh, her blood sugar levels are way better than mine, and she will let me know every day. Um, keep going. I was there's just in the stuff. beginning. There's a, there's a, she. We just recorded a podcast when she was talking about it. We're, it's not a competition, but I'm winning. <laughs> she just did it. So I don't know what she's talking about. Keep going. All the things that you're good at. You've already named them. I don't have to do it. Not anymore. all of them. Thank you. I'm babe. sure that there's, Thank I'm you sure for being there's like, a fan of mine. I'm sure there's so many more things that I didn't even so mention. Much. She'll, she'll mention them. Things? She'll mention them after we get finished recording because she doesn't want to seem pretentious. But it's like, there's a lot of stuff that she will. Honestly, let you know as soon as it happens. I'm really good at this. Are you and done? Let me tell you why. Are you done? I mean, Emma, are okay. you ready? I hate it when we wear black because then I just feel like I'm picking all the whole time. But right now I'm picking off of me. Please do not clip this and have her saying that she hates black because she doesn't. Um, I'm black. She's You're the me. one that edits the podcast. You're probably going to clip this exactly. Well, I'm talking part. about people who are watching it after I edit it. Editing. We'll be done. Editing. Music. Music. That is the subject of today's music. podcast is music. Music makes the people come together. together. Yeah. Right so now, it's. Right? No, that's a completely different. So oh, that's why I'm so excited about doing music for this episode of the pod. Because I, as you know, I love music. Music. Loves it. I love, love music. music too. Yes, she does. She does love music. Music but we, trivia. She she loves music. Not good at it. But we don't necessarily love the same type of music, mm-hmm. and that's part of what I want to get in today. Is you know what type of music that we love mm-hmm. and why we love it. Because as someone who was born in 1980, who grew up in a home with someone who loved music and listened to it. All the time, had the vinyl, had the cassette tapes, had the CDs. Such a cool Something collection. Was always going on in the house. Yeah, I got a mom when she passed away. Left all of these different vinyl records. Uh, you know, just I, I ended up getting them, and you know, it's just like Confunction, the Barcays were two biggies for her. Prince, of course. Uh, me, I love you know, Luther Vandross. I kind of love Luther Vandross. Uh, me, you know, I love that stuff too. But you know, I went towards you know some some artists that were more of my generation. Your your Prince, your Usher, your uh, uh, Public Enemy, uh, N.W.A., Outkast. Uh, Whitney Houston. I mean, the list goes on and on. And then later on in life, you get into the rock and roll and the metal. And that's where, that's where I was really, you know, back in high school, 
Like, I really started to dig into that stuff, the Megadeth, the Def Leppard, the Metallica, a little later, Ben Folds 5, where I was, I love the Foo Fighters, Nirvana, mm-hmm. just, again, this is something I can go on and on and on and on about, and it became a big part of my social media, mm-hmm. because of my love of music, it's not, I could, there's no way that I could keep, like, my socials, the stuff that I talk about on social media, social media, the things that I love, you know, professional wrestling, comedy, music, you know, those types of things. That's what I'm really into. So I talk about them on my social media, and music has become a large part of that. So uh, to have the outlet to where I can share my love of music and find other people who have like mm-hmm. interests is just really cool. Yeah. Uh, and I know that my wife has a lot of stuff that she grew up with and that she likes as well. Mm-hmm. And but it's you know it's not necessarily the same stuff that I was into. Right. 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 So growing up, my listened to a lot of um, a lot of country, old school country. So like you know your George Jones, your Conway Twitty. Like one of my earliest memories is slow dancing. With my dad to That's My Job, um, I was like two when that song came out. I was like two or three. And so, you know, all the old school um, country. But then my mom listened to, um, I didn't look their names up. See, again, this, y'all, this, <laughs> y'all are all going to be, this is going to be really struggle, a struggle for everyone. Um, not John Lennon. Shoot. Talk while I'm looking this up. <laughs> Not John Lennon. That's the first thing I right. Uh So, Who, a mute. What did it? God, this is the worst. So, yeah, I love music. And there are a lot of artists that I, I guess I'll just randomly talk about artists while she scrolls through stuff because that's going to happen a lot in this episode. Bob Dylan. Well, Bob Dylan, yeah. Well, that wasn't the person. I really got in the Green Day and Weezer uh, at one point. Uh, I love country music too. Uh, Travis Tritt is huge for me. Love me some Travis Tritt. Joe Diffie, Pickup Man, uh, John Deere Green is one of my favorite songs. I love me some John Deere Green. Uh, so there's a lot of different artists. And he blows you- me away when we do karaoke because he randomly pull out these, and I'm just like. <sighs> How I didn't even know you liked this, and then you're like killing it at karaoke. I'm not gonna remember this guy's name, yeah, and if, I can't even think of a lyric to get you to help me. Um, so back to my music interest, um, old school country. Then, like in junior high, my sister was in high school. I was introduced to like Tupac. And I would impress you. I, I would. I'm not going to do it now because then I feel like I would embarrass myself. Another one of the many things that my wife does really well. <laughs> Stop. So um, Tupac and then like there was Biggie and Ice Cube and, you know, then I got Ice into. Ice Cube was my first concert. And then I got into like end of high school Ja Rule. Fast and Furious soundtrack. That's how I was, that's, I mean, that's like, seriously. She loves Ja Rule. I that love Ja Rule. I'm not ja going to lie. I love Ja Rule. But um, my mom at that point, she like kind of had rebelled against the old school country that we grew up with. And she was listening to, to things like, this is probably junior high, beginning of high school. So she was listening to things like, or people like, um, uh, who, um, who yes. sings that song that's, who are the people like Everclear and, well, Everclear. Everclear. And <laughs> this is so fun for you. And this is the best time. Um, this is like the wrestling episode. I'm excited. <sighs> This Hold is on. Just fun. Bands like Incubus. Okay, that was I just saw them on the Incubus, list. another one that I really love. No, but that's Incubus is we're not to that part of the story. I love Incubus. Uh Drive is one of my favorite songs. Uh Make Yourself. 
that album backwards and forwards is one of my favorite albums of all time. I used to listen to that album just ad nauseum. I remember uh, there are a lot of songs on that album that I sang that I I loved and I would sing in karaoke right over mics. Um, during around that same time, John Mayer. Oh, uh, John love, Mayer, love yes. John Mayer then too. That was uh, college for me. Yeah, that was. It was like end of college, but yeah. during high school, we actually listened to a lot of the same bands. So I, I wasn't. I never got into like hardcore. I was always contemporary Christian, and um, you know some of the heavier Christian mm-hmm. bands, I guess, like Audio Adrenaline. Mm-hmm. <laughs> People like are gonna laugh at Boys, that. Uh, Newsboys, DC Talk. DC Talk. Like I really liked their music yeah. too. Um, but I kind of stayed on that kind of cleaner. I, I didn't really go she was heavy to metal. Carmen. She was listening to Carmen like all the Carmen time. Was not to Carmen, Carmen was a big one for her. It was not. It, in it fact, really it wasn't one was. of my favorites at all. Don't let DC her Talk lie absolutely to you. was. Who did I introduce you to? Um, there was another Christian. The Christian. It was an audio adrenaline you had never heard. Might have been. Yeah, um, but during that same time, I was listening. I'm sorry that I had to look up the list, but, but I was like all, I was Incubus, Stain, Three Doors Down. I wasn't a big Foo Fighters. Ooh, three Doors Down, Stain, uh, uh, Foo um, Fighters, Love. Who was Stain? Uh, Alien Ant. Oh, Alien Ant Farm. Puddle of Mud. Please, Puddle man. of Mud. They're um, stop it. Puddle of Mud. Really? Yeah, and then there was the Creed because you know the Creed did the kind of the crossover, and I think that's probably when. I started listening to some of those other bands was when Creed, who was a Christian contemporary artist, went into the the, the secular uh, genres, I guess. But it was like, they were still staying true to who they were. Yeah. It was just like, it was so good that it was crossover. Yeah. So it's like, and Skillet was the same way. Skillet, yeah. Skillet, they were so know, good. Skillet was the same way where they're, you know, big time Christian mm-hmm. band. Um even if you even if you go back to like old school, uh, Striper, Striper was one you know that was a you know that they, they leaned towards like Christian, but they mm-hmm. you know they were still a big time rock band mm-hmm. and had a really good sound. Um, so there's you know we there's a lot of our music taste mm-hmm. that does intersect, but then there are there is some of the stuff that's different. But I, I it's been great that I've been able to introduce her mm-hmm. to some of these bands and some of this music that she would have probably never listened to. Well and if I, we had, I'm fixing if we to go together. I'm fixing a spiritual on us too though. So we um as a worship team um here at our church we did a study on God vib it's called God Vibrations. And I'm not gonna be able to quote it. I'm not gonna be able to like give y'all like super interesting tidbits but what i do know it talked about how all every every energy and everything has a vibration and so like our voices have vibrations sounds have vibrations like energy does everything it's it's what it is and so there's some really very interesting aspects of that study but one of the things is that i i'm a feeler Mm -hmm. and so especially with music and um she is very feely I am very feeling. She is very feeling. All the time. Um, but also, I like... All the time. Are you complaining? I, I know I'm Anyways. not. Anyways. Um, All the time. He's not wrong. I'm not going to deny it. Anyways. <laughs> Moving on. on. So, um, with the God Vibrations, that there is a lot of this like heavier metal... The heavy sound, some of the screaming that I don't even understand the lyrics and never really wanted to understand the lyrics. And there's just, you good? Yeah, I'm good. Keep going. He's tired of me talking. Um, I'm tired in general. Yeah. It's been a long weekend. It has been a long weekend. Great weekend, but long weekend. Um, I will take as much time as I want, sir. Please don't leave me again. Um, So... God vibrations. Okay. So there is a lot of like darker, heavier stuff that, I mean, even sometimes in the live, if somebody requests and I'm like, I got to check out, it's like too much for me. And there's a lot of darkness surrounding some, some of the music that people really love. Since that study and recognizing that. I don't, I don't want to misquote the book, but 
I had this revelation that basically sounds can be anything that I want them to be, that I can feel, I can, I can pray into those or I can um, just be in a different headspace and I don't necessarily have to be, I don't have to feel that darkness, but I can recognize that it's there and address whatever it's triggering in me, whether that's fear, whether that's um, misunderstanding or, you know, just not um, – just it's just not something I'm used to you know something that's not not, not not my thing um because of that specific study I have learned to appreciate a whole lot more music especially with we're doing a lot of collaborations with bands recently and there's some just really incredible stuff that I would have never listened to I mean like Beartooth when we went to go see them a few weeks ago that just if you look at their fan fan base that we that we saw um they were not people i hung out with in high school and college i did he did but i didn't and it was there was just some just some some darkness you know what i mean or just this whether it was the way they dressed or we were just different my people yeah next people right and so I don't not love you guys. I just, it just wasn't. She doesn't hang out with you in, co- in high school. I just didn't school. hang out with you in high in school college. and college. And a lot of that's she because. She hung out with the athletes and like the the jocks and the popular people. But she didn't hang out with y'all. But it's not because she didn't love you. That's it's not just that. actually true. I was on debate team. And I hung out with a lot of the nerds, as you call them. I, no, and yourself. No, I, I call myself that. But yeah. I'm not saying it wasn't the, like, she hung out with some of the nerds. I kind of like hung out with a lot of different people, for the record. Mostly, like, the popular kids. That's not true. She was a mean girl in high school. That is not true. She's told me. That's what she told me. She told me she Kim, was a mean girl in high school. Kim, since you're going to be watching this and I know that you do, please. Yeah, I don't know Kim, uh, but she's. Kim knows Kim. Kim knows Kim. Kim knows Kim. Kim's cool. Kim set like him straight. Kim. Set like them yeah. straight. Set, yeah, set, set I'm them tagging straight. you in this yeah, post. Go ahead, go, yeah, <laughs> she probably will. Yeah, comment Kim and tell and try to defend her, even though she told me that she hung out with people who beat up nerds in high school. She told me. No, that's this. what you said. I just didn't deny it. <laughs> I rest my case. Anyway, so like Beartooth, and then. They have had, they've gone through this transition through their journey where when I hear an entire group of people that love this heavy, hardcore, like dark, deep, dark, I mean, that's a, some, sometimes that's the only word I can use to describe it. And they're screaming because of a new song that they have written out that I matter. What was that? What were the words that everybody was screaming? I can't remember, but it was just, it was just, it was just like, I matter and I am important to this world. And they are screaming those words. And it was just so, it was beautiful to watch the light in people's eyes and the excitement to be seeing that they are enough. And so, and I'm getting emotional when I'm talking about that because there has been, for a, a lot of my life where music music moves me it's it's super important to me i like there are lots of different times in my life where you can i can you can say what song got you through that and i can tell you um for the majority of the last probably 5 or 6 years it has been you know Carrie Job and Lauren Daigle and Maverick City Music and um uh Hawthorne with her um I can't think of her name. It starts with K, I think. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's just there's a lot of that has been it's been God centered and it's been that. But I've I've really like I'm introduced to to music all the time in his lives and and we're you know, these new bands and there are sounds that I like and sounds that he likes and then there are sounds that we hear and we're like we both really don't like this or are we both holy crap this is incredible like Mm -hmm. i mean every anytime songs play like blacklist yeah freaking there let me tell you 
the Blacklist, the show, their soundtracks are just yeah, incredible. I mean, we've we found some really incredible really, yeah. artists They're on that, incredible. and so yeah. very different. And then, like, just going through kind of, I think I went through most of my genres up until like high school. I mean, up until college, and then when Emma was born in 2013. I don't know what it was. Well, no, I do know what it was. I had listened to a lot of jazz. Um, been had made a lot of trips to New Orleans during the time that I was pregnant with her, and um, there was a lot of jazz that she heard in the womb. And so when she got out of the womb, and any time I needed to, to calm her down, I pulled out like um, Louis Armstrong and um, who Billy Billy Holiday and um, Ella Fitzgerald. Like that was that was my Pandora station for her, and she. We listened to the horns and the, just the, ugh, incredible. And, but then you can turn on a Mozart or Bach or, um, I can't even think of any other names right now. My mom would kill, my grandfather would be so disappointed. Beethoven. Leonardo, Donatello, Michelangelo. <laughs> you can turn any of that on. And there are sometimes that like, like studying in college, that's what I studied to, and they allowed me to listen to the music while I was taking the test because it kept me it kept me focused. And but there are sometimes there are classical pieces that I just sit there and I it's very emotional and I just start crying for can't tell you what it's triggering in me. I, I can't. It's not bad. I'm 100 percent there with classical music because anytime I hear the music from the Great Poupon commercial, I get kind of emotional. You know. I want. I think it's Baccarini's Minuet Number Five or somewhere like that. The Grey Poupon commercial. Yeah, the Grey Poupon song. And you cry? Oh, I get very emotional. Part of me, if you happen to have any Grey Poupon, it just it touches me deep in my Gen X soul. I feel like you're not. I'm being. I'm being for a do 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 do. Tune up right now, just thinking about it. But it's it's. <laughs> but I will say this: that music triggers emotions, mm-hmm. and it does you know hits certain spots. You know, back to what she was talking about uh, with you know certain songs that have certain messages. Mm-hmm. You know, you can look at um, Third Eye Blind, the song Jumper, mm-hmm. uh, Papa Roach, who was a heavier band, but they have Leave the Light On. Which is a you know a cry out to you know people who are like in the like that same realm of people who are feeling downtrodden, mm-hmm. feeling you know less than enough to say, hey, we love you, we're here for you, we support yeah. you, and it's like that's one of the main things that I love about music mm-hmm. is that there's a message behind it. There's you know there's a message of light and love. Yeah. That unites and brings people together. And that's mm-hmm. a lot of what we like together is all about is the way that music can bring people together and mm-hmm. unite them. And we we hear a world that contains people who want to divide, who want to mm-hmm. separate. And sometimes they use music to do it. And that's not what music is. Music is for all. We mm-hmm. can listen to whatever we want to listen to. You know, I love rock and country and yeah. you know like 80s billy joel we only play 80s joel like there's so many different things that i listen to where people are like you mm-hmm. you know when i first started the social media journey that was a lot of what it was where people were like i can't believe you would be listening to this but now it's more of thank you mm-hmm. Th- this is a song that i love i haven't heard this forever it means a lot to me Thank you for connecting with me through the music, music and through what yeah. you do because it has unlocked core memories inside of me that I didn't even know existed anymore. So thank you so much for, you know, this This is the song that my dad and I used to listen to mm-hmm. together. This is the song that my husband and I used to listen to together before he passed. Yeah. This is the song that, you know, that, my you know, I listen to this song, you know, my kids started uh, were rocking and you know, singing it along with you because they, that's what they listen to. And, you know, mm-hmm. that's one of the main things is that uh, people, you know, will tell me how their children have been influenced yeah. by the posts and some of the things that go on. Like when I did the uh, ABCs to uh, Coming Undone mm-hmm. by Corn, 
the number of people who were like, I taught my kids the ABCs to your song. It's just, it it so really, cool. it really does something with, to you when you hear something like that. So it's like, music holds a special place in our hearts and it connects people and that's mm -hmm. what I try to do with my social media because... Well, that's, you know, that's one of my favorite stories and one that um, I will always remember... Um, you know, again, we come from different backgrounds. We come from different loves of music and, yeah. and, and interest. And uh, we are a very, what I would consider, a very unlikely pair. Mm -hmm. um, and just because we just have lived, we've lived different lives and our, our worlds collided and it works. Um, but one of the kind of the recognition that there was such a divide in music because um, I just don't think I, I'd ever really thought enough about it, but um, was when Bulls on Parade came out. That was um, summer of 2022, um, and he, you know, stopped in the middle and, and, you know, did the water bottle, like drank his water and got ready to like just, you know, headbang the mm -hmm. come with it now, right? Yeah. And um, then we had Furious Nay duetted it. And that made sense to me because I'd seen her and I'd seen some of her um, content, but it didn't really like resonate or like register that that had been her life and a struggle that she had had, like really a, a hard, hard reality that she didn't feel accepted. Well, then all of a sudden she duetted and then somebody, another black artist duetted this and this, and then all of a sudden there's one video that has like 30 different black artists on his original video and this whole kind of movement of I have found my village I have been ostracized from my family from my people from the the because I'm not listening to the music I'm supposed to listen to and it blew my mind because there was, uh, you know, I, that's, that's one of the things that I do in my job with his social um, media is that I read the majority of y'all's comments. He does too. And he does all fan engagement. I do all of the merch and like business engagement, but I still read through all of the comments and to see people say, I've never felt so accepted. Yeah. Um, this is the first time in my life that I feel like I have finally found my tribe. Yeah. <clears throat> that was life altering. I mean, it, it rocked my world because I was like, I need you to explain this to me. And he mm -hmm. was like, babe, you don't understand. Like all of my life I've been told that's not what you're supposed to be listening to. Why yeah. can't you listen to your people's music? Right. Why can't, I mean, all the things. And to finally find, like, I think even he has found, like, that there's some acceptance and there's, mm -hmm. he doesn't, Absolutely. when you find, when there's an opportunity to fe not feel like you're so alone in this world, that's life changing for yeah. some. Yeah, that's a big thing uh, with what we try to put out there with the content and uh, just what uh, I've grown up with. And my love of music has been, I've been able to share my love of music with the world through social media. And that's really how all of that started, you know, during the pandemic, while I was doing all the social media stuff, I uh, found these mashups that had contained all this great music. Shout out to DJ Cumberbund, uh, DJ Eric Rhodes, um, DJ H Hamster Dance, uh, just all these musicians and I, I, I hear Canvas, absolutely. Uh, all these DJs and all these uh, people who deal with music that I've been able to connect with through social media and and then the musicians themselves. Um, so it's just like Cullen, lead singer of uh, Sleep Theory. Love him. Love him. He's Wonderful man. Incredible voice. Uh, so yeah, yeah. He's just Gosh. great. The, the entire band. Just great guys. Yeah. Um, and getting to meet them and talk to them uh, men alive, the guys from Pop Evil, mm -hmm. uh, Lejean Wimble uh, Lejean, um, uh, who is the lead singer of Seven Dust. I've never met him, but he does follow me on Instagram, and I'm very appreciative of that because he is a pioneer of you know African Americans in 
rock music, you know, mm-hmm. Fishbone, another group that I just truly admire and love mm-hmm. because of their contributions and what they were able, what they've been able to do. So I'm, I'm just very fortunate to be in the position that I'm in, and to be able to share my love of music with the world, and it it means a lot to me. Mm-hmm. And I'm thankful that you guys uh, appreciate it. And, and accept him for it. I mean, and, it's just incredible. Yes. So I'm just very thankful and very appreciative of all of that. And just, you know, long story short, I love music, and mm-hmm. I'm glad that you love it too. Uh, so thank you for joining us on today's episode. Uh, go back and check out past episodes. Spotify, YouTube, yeah. do your mm-hmm. thing. Um, the shirt. We write together. Mm-hmm. If you go to uh, the link tree in my bio on my socials, you can get that. And also uh, the Nutrisense stuff uh, is there to, mm-hmm. to click on the questionnaire, fill it out, uh, see if it's right for you. If it is, then use the uh, promo code ROCK24 for $35 off. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. Make sure that you you know hydrate and do your thing. Uh, if nobody's told you today you're loved, you're appreciated, you're important you're more than enough exactly as you are always remember to be great Uh, we will see you next time on Hang With Harrison's goodbye bye